So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take a look at the bullseye lab that you did on Friday. And up here, I have a projectile launcher for you. Um, oh, forgot one important safe piece of equipment. Certainly, anytime we are launching things, you want to make sure that we have our safety glasses on. So, our projectile launcher has a spring inside this launcher and we put a ball in the launcher and then we loaded it in to the short range which was one click and then what we have here is we have a photo gate this l-shaped thing is a photo gate and the photo gate's job is to determine how much time it takes the ball to get through there and it knows how big that ball is and therefore it can measure if it knows the the distance that it covered and the amount of time it took what can it find velocity, velocity exactly so this will allow us to determine what is the velocity of the ball immediately when it leaves the photo gate launcher okay now that's important to us because is this velocity horizontal or vertical when it first comes out horizontal. horizontal what do we know about horizontal motion is it constant or changing constant. it is constant and so we use constant velocity equations to describe it specifically we want to talk about average velocity is displacement over time that's everything in an x motion right that's our our horizontal distance which in physics we call that the range x Okay, I know in math, range is y. In physics, range is x. And then we want to determine how much time it was in the air. So to do this lab, we simply measured the distance from the floor to the top of the, to this. There's a little marker that says ball position right here. So we measured that vertical distance. Why is that important to you? Why do I care how high this is? Figure out the time it takes. Exactly. This helps me determine how much time it's in the air. So we know it's going to come out and move steady, steady, steady in a horizontal motion, but we also know the vertical piece is going to accelerate. So it's going to get faster and faster and faster this way. And that's what gives us that nice curved path. Okay. So certainly you can see the equipment that we had to use, right? You know that we had to measure this with a meter stick and we had to make sure we're wearing our safety glasses because we are shooting something in the physics lab. Um, and then, we simply released this. This was connected to SparkView. It gave us that velocity, that horizontal, initial horizontal velocity. We measured the height. And from these things, with the height, what can I figure out? You said it, it, I can determine the time this is in the air. Okay? Is that time the same if it travels along the path as it would be if we just dropped it? Yes. Because of that, we could use our free fall equation time is the square root of two times the height over gravity. We could do that and predict the time that this was going to be in the air. And then we used our range equation, x equals, in this case, it'd be v naught x times time. And we could predict how far horizontally the ball will go. And then we simply laid a piece of tape there, measured it out horizontally, and placed the ball in spot, and we fired it, and we, we tested it. Okay, in the video, uh, our prediction was 100% accurate. The actual range and the predicted range, they were the same. Okay? Um, had you done this in class, you would have gotten similar results. Okay? But you could have made a mistake somewhere. Where are some places that we could have made mistakes in this lab? Measurements. Okay, definitely. I could have mismeasured this height. That was the only thing that I directly measured. Okay, I, I measured the height to indirectly give me time, and then I needed that to get the range. Okay, now let me ask you this. This photo gate, it has a little vertical beam. Well, what if my projectile launcher was not perfectly horizontal? What if it was angled up a little bit? Would that give me 
an accurate reading on the horizontal speed? No, I could be off a little bit because if it's angled upward, it has some vertical and less horizontal and that could be a problem. Okay, also, if my photo gate was not perfectly aligned with the center of the ball, okay, if I don't have this straight over the path when it goes through, if I had it tilted at an angle, that's not gonna give me a good read on the ball and that's gonna mess up my horizontal velocity, okay? The other thing is, this is horizontal and I know because I've pushed the ball back at the back and it's sitting against the spring. But what if the ball rolled forward to the front of this projectile when I pulled it, then this velocity that I got, it didn't get all the force behind the ball and so it might not be accurate then either. These are problems that you would have had in lab had you been able to do this hands-on. Those are things that could have shown up for you, okay? We're gonna go ahead and fire this because I need to get the ball out. Okay, but we won't aim it. Oh, well, that's kind of anticlimactic, but we won't aim it there, Brain. That would be nice, huh? Okay, so we're gonna see how that actually worked. We wanna make sure that it stays against the spring and we would simply pull the lever to release the ball, and then you can see the path that it took. Okay. All right, any questions about the lab that we did? Okay, so you're gonna use your lab journal to take the practicum, and then when you complete the practicum, there's only four questions. Uh, when you complete the practicum, we will go over the notes on projectile motion and we're going to talk about projectiles that we shoot up in the air at an angle. Okay, so please make sure that you have gone over those after we're waiting for everybody else to get caught up to us. Um, and then we will 